Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So this week I'm going to show you how to make your own lightsaber in Scratch. And who knows, if this goes well, maybe we'll add more mechanics and flesh this out into its own game. Okay, so open a new Scratch project, then delete this cat sprite because we won't be needing it today. So click here on this X, then go to your stage here and click on backdrops in the top left corner. Now go to the bottom left corner and click on choose a backdrop. Now you can choose any backdrop that you want, have a bit of a look through. Something dark is probably best. The one that I'm going to choose is called Stars. So once you find one that you like, click on that. Lovely, we should ha all have a nice dark background for our lightsaber to go on top of. Speaking of which, let's draw our lightsaber. To do that, go to the bottom right corner here, then move up and click on this button here which says Paint. Now you should have a new empty sprite called Sprite 1. Now we're going to rename this sprite by clicking here, and then once we select and delete Sprite 1, we need to call this Lightsaber. Now it's time to draw our lightsaber designs. And just like lightsabers are in Star Wars, each of them can be individual. Your lightsaber can be unique to you. You can draw it any way that you like. But I'm gonna show you a few tips and tricks and how you use those is entirely up to you. First, let's select the rectangle tool here. Then let's change the fill of the rectangle by clicking up here. Now most lightsabers are different shades of gray to look a bit like metal. I'm actually going to make mine look a little bit more gold. So I'm going to select this here and change it to sort of a yellow. Then I'm going to reduce the brightness down a little bit. And then to make it look more metallic, we can use these shaders here. Now this allows you to have two different shades of a color, either going left to right, up or down, or center to outside. I'm gonna start off by choosing this shader up and down. And once you've clicked on that, you'll notice it's added in a second color here. I'm gonna change this to be a similar color to the gold, but just a little bit darker. So now that I've got my two different shades, I can draw my rectangle. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now it's very important that you draw your lightsaber pointing to the right. So where the lightsaber blade is going to come out of is right on this side here. Now what I'm gonna do is just zoom in using this button here. Now I'm going to put some silvery rectangles right here. So I'm going to click down here on the rectangle tool again, and then I'm going to change the fill color, and I'm going to use the saturation to make two very pale grays. Then once I've done that, I'm going to use this shader, the outside and inside shader. Now I want the brighter color on the inside, that looks good. So now I'm going to make these two very narrow little shapes. You can even use these little blue dots to move your rectangles around. And because I want another one of these, I'm just going to click on it and then press Control and then C on my keyboard and then Control and then V on my keyboard and it copies one and I'm gonna put it right here. Now, if you want to move any of your rectangles around, you can select this tool here and that will allow you to do that. I want to make another rectangle, but I want this one to be a lot darker. So I'm gonna click on the rectangle tool again, change the fill color, and I'm going to change the saturation down so they both turn to gray. But then I'm also gonna turn the brightness down so they're a lot darker. And the shader that I'm going to use is this one here, the left and right shader. Okay, I'm happy with that. So let's draw this rectangle just like this. Remember, you can always change the color of your rectangle later by selecting it. Next, I want to draw some lines. Now, if you draw anything that you don't like, you can always use this tool to select it and then press the delete button on your keyboard and they will go away. Another thing to remember when drawing lines is that if you hold down shift on your keyboard before you start drawing, the line will always be nice and straight like this. So I'm gonna put one in the middle like this, and then another one here, and then another one here. Another thing you can do with the select tool is if you select the thing you want to move, you can then use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move things around nice and carefully. Now I'm getting close to pretty happy with this. I'm just going to add in another rectangle right on this side here. And I also want to add a little red glowing light right here, like an on off button. So I'm gonna use the circle tool. 
I'm gonna make the fill a nice red. I'm going to use the outside inside shader and the other color I'm going to make a much darker red. And then once I'm done, I'm just gonna draw a nice little circle. Now we need to make sure that our lightsaber is in the correct place in our drawing area. So zoom out so that you can see the whole drawing area. Then use the select tool Click and hold and drag a box over all of your lightsaber so that it's all selected. Then you should be able to drag around all of your lightsaber. Now, can you see that little center of the drawing area has a crosshairs on it, like a cross and a little circle? We actually want that to be right where the lightsaber blade comes out. So just about here and let go. Now you can come back and do some more drawing on your lightsaber later, but for now, let's start making it work with some code. Let's go to the top left corner and click on code right here. Make sure that you've got your lightsaber selected so it's all blue. Then let's go to events, the yellow category on the left. Look for when green flag clicked. Drag that out into the center. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see this a bit better. Then we need to go to control the orange category and pull out a forever loop. Put that on the bottom. Now let's make it so that our lightsaber follows the mouse around. So go to motion, the dark blue category there and look for set X2. Drag out the set X2. Now in our scratch game, there are two dimensions, the X dimension, which controls left and right, and the Y dimension, which controls up and down. Let's make our lightsaber follow the same X coordinate as the mouse X coordinate. So go to sensing the light blue category, look down until you see mouse X and drag that out and put it right over the top of whatever number is in set X2. Now, when we click the green flag, forever this lightsaber will set its X to the same as the mouse X. So click the green flag on your project and then wave your mouse around and you'll see that the lightsaber is following the mouse. Have a look at this number here, the X coordinate of your lightsaber. And notice how the number changes depending on how far left and how far right the lightsaber is. Now the center point of the lightsaber is actually the end which the blade comes out of. And that center is in the middle of the screen when the X is zero. Then the number gets bigger if we take it across to the right side of the screen and it should stop at around about 240. But if we go to the left of zero, then it goes into minus numbers. Now let's get out some code that rotates our lightsaber in different directions. Now let's get some code that rotates our lightsaber around in different directions. Go to motion and look for point in direction 90. Drag that out. Now you can click on 90 and you can move this arrow around and it will rotate your lightsaber around to whatever direction that you set this number to. Let's try doing something interesting. Let's get another mouse X and put it over our point in direction. So right click on mouse X, normal click on duplicate, and then put this mouse X over our point in direction number. Now, when we move our lightsaber around, you'll notice it rotates depending how far left or how far right it is. Watch the X coordinate number here and the direction number here, and you'll notice that most of the time they're the same. Once we get the lightsaber upside down like this, it's about 180. If we get it pointing sideways like this, it's 90. Pointing sideways the other direction is minus 90. But this rotation is far too much. Let's make the rotation a lot smaller. To do that, we're going to take this number here, the mouse X number, and we're going to divide it to make it smaller. To do that, go to operators, the green category on the left, and then look four down and you'll find this here. This is a division operator. In computer coding, this slash means divide by. Now what we're going to do is take our mouse X and drag it into the first socket of our division operator. Then we're going to drag the whole thing by the green bit back into point in direction. Now, the more that we divide this by, the smaller the rotation will be. So let's start off with divided by 10. Okay, that's looking a lot more reasonable. Now you can try out different numbers and see what it does. 
I'm going to actually set this to 25 and I recommend you do the same for now. Why we're using 25 will be a bit more clear later. Now, I don't know about you, but my lightsaber is up far too high. I want a bunch more space above it so I can see the blade once we ignite it. Now, so far, we've only been changing the direction of our lightsaber and also the X coordinate, which is the left and right. So if we want it to go down, we need to make sure that we change the Y coordinate. So go across to motion, the dark blue category on the left, get out set Y, and then this number that you put in here will dictate how high or low your lightsaber is. Now, if you want it to be lower than the middle of the screen, you've got to use a minus number. So I'm going to try minus 50. Okay, that is looking a lot lower, but I think it needs to go even lower. So let's try minus 130. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. Now, one other thing is my, I think my lightsaber is a bit too big. Maybe yours is as well. And there's a nice, easy way to fix this without having to redraw it again, which is a lot of work. Click here where it says size 100 and make that a smaller number. Now I'm gonna make mine 75 and then press enter and you'll notice that your lightsaber should shrink down. If your lightsaber is still a bit too big, feel free to make this an even smaller number, maybe 50 or even 25. Now, for reasons that will be clear later, I don't want the lightsaber going all the way to the left side of the screen or all the way to the right side of the screen because the blade then will go outside of the screen. So I want to make sure that this lightsaber doesn't go all the way to the edges of the screen. So we need to do something similar here into our set X that we did here in our point in direction. We need to make this mouse X number a smaller number. Now we could use another divide by, but we can also use a multiplied by. So go to operators, the green category on the left, and look for the third down. This little star is the computer symbol for multiply by or times by. So again, let's get this mouse X, drag that into the first socket of our multiply by. And as long as this number is less than one, we're going to make our lightsaber move a little bit slower than the mouse. So I'm going to choose zero and then a dot and then a seven. Then drag this whole thing back into set X2 and see what happens. Now you've got this cool kind of effect where the lightsaber looks like it's almost trying to reach or stretch across to the left and the right side once you put the mouse there. Now, finally, it's time to make our lightsaber blade. Now we're gonna be using a special tool for this, the pen tool to animate the blade. So to add that tool to our scratch project, go to the bottom left corner and click on add extension. Then look for the pen tool and click on that. Now we have this new category here underneath the My Blocks category, we've got pen. Now we're going to be making our lightsaber do the actual drawing. The sprite is going to be moving around and laying the lines that make up our lightsaber blade. So the first thing that we need to do is decide what color our lightsaber is going to be. So get out this set pen color two and drag that and put it right underneath our set Y. Then click on this color and choose whatever you like, but I recommend you set the brightness up a little bit higher and the saturation up higher as well. Now you can decide whatever color you want your lightsaber to be and you can come back and change your mind and change the color later if you want. Once you've decided on that, we need to set the thickness of the pen line that we are drawing. So we need to get out set pen size to. Drag that out and put it underneath our set pen color to. For now, let's set the pen size to 15 pixels. Now we need to get out this pen down block. Now what this actually means is, if you can imagine we were drawing with a pen, if you touch the pen to the paper and then start moving the pen around, you leave behind the line that you're drawing. But if you lift the pen up from the paper and then move your hand around, you're not drawing anything. We want to make sure that we are drawing something, so get out pen down and put that just right here underneath set Y. Now, as an experiment, move your lightsaber left and right and you'll notice that we're leaving behind this trail of whatever color you've chosen. Now what we need to do is make sure that this color is going up where the blade should be. Now this time, instead of changing X and Y to make the blade, we're going to use a move block. 
go to motion, the dark blue category, and look for move 10 steps. This move 10 steps will move the lightsaber forwards in whatever direction it is currently facing. And remember, our lightsaber is always facing in the direction that we want the blade to come out of. So get out move 10 steps, and let's put this at the bottom of our code. Okay, so the lightsaber has moved only a very small amount, so we need to make this a lot more. Let's make this 300 steps. So let's type in 300. And now you can see that unfortunately we've got this blade, but the lightsaber is now on the top of the screen. So we need to make sure that we move the lightsaber down to the bottom of the screen. Now, if we move it forwards 300 steps, then all we need to do is move it backwards 300 steps. So right click on move 300 steps, duplicate it, and then type in minus 300. Put this on the bottom of our code. Now, I don't know about you, but I think we have a bit of a problem here. This color is not going away once we've drawn it. To make sure that we don't just fill up the entire screen with the lightsaber color, let's go back to the pen tools and get out erase all, and then put that right above where we've got pen down. Now, moment of truth. Perfect, excellent. We've got this cool lightsaber blade moving around now. But this doesn't look quite right yet. We want there to be a smaller white line inside of this lightsaber. Now we already move our lightsaber up to draw the purple line for me. So when we move it down, why don't we just use that opportunity to draw the white line? So have a look at the bottom of your code and right in between this move 300 steps, and this move minus 300 steps. Let's change the pen color and change the pen size. So right click on set pen color, duplicate this, get rid of these two moves, we don't need those, but let's set the pen color to white. And let's set the pen size to five. Then drag these two into the space between 300 and minus 300. And there we have it, this solid white core of our lightsaber. Okay, this looks a little bit dull at the moment. The cool thing about lightsabers is that they're always flickering. So let's add that flickering effect. Now currently, the thickness of the colored part of our lightsaber and the white part of our lightsaber are always the same. But what if we could make them change? Let's introduce a little bit of chaos, shall we? Go to operators and look for pick random one to 10. Let's drag in pick random one to 10 into our first set pen size. And let's pick a random number between 15 and 20. There we go, that's looking better already. Then let's get out a pick random five to 10 and put it here. Now click the green flag to make sure that your code is running the most updated version. And then you can click this button here, the four arrows, if you want to see your project in full screen glory. Now, if you want, you could change some of these pick random numbers to make the flickering more or less extreme if you want your lightsaber to look different. This is also a perfect opportunity to change your lightsaber's color, try out some different combinations, maybe mess around with the movement code and see what that does, or even go back to your hilt and draw it in a different style now that you know what the project looks like now it's all been put together. And that's all the time we have for this week. Subscribe and ring the bell as always if you want to see what we're going to be doing with this project in the future and with our other projects like our ongoing Undertale series. Let me know in the comments what you would like me to do next with this project or if you have any problems with your code. Aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.